Hello, it's Robert Miner with Dynamic Traders Group for their Saturday, March 9th DT Reports video update for our YouTube subscribers. This is, of course, a condensed version of the kind of video tutorials and trade strategies and updates that we have for the subscribers of our DT Reports. But I think there's some great information and immediate information for a couple setups coming this coming week. And this is going to be a tutorial about some time and price retracements. And as usual, I'm going to use markets that are right up to date through the day. I'm recording this Friday afternoon, March 8th. And it'll be a couple setups coming up probably early next week, as well as how to determine the probable extent in time and in price of some trends or counter trends. So let's take a look. This is the SPX weekly data. And for the first time since the weekly momentums, uh, dual look back momentums have reached oh, uh, overbought, and that was the first the first week in February when they reached that. For the first time since then, uh, as of this week, they have made uh, two signals in one week. One is a uh, reversal. A pattern reversal signal and the second is a reversal confirmation signal all in one week what is this week this week was an outside triple close reversal week Outs it's actually double outside week that means the range is outside the ranges of the past two weeks and a triple close reversal is because the close of this week is below the closes of the prior two weeks so the the uh, weekly high is complete and we've made the bear reversal in our weekly momentums but boy it, it took four weeks almost five weeks from the time the uh, Weekly momentums got overbought before we made any reversal signal. We just kept uh, continuing up. We had some minor daily reversals, but uh, no significant reversals that indicated a weekly high was complete. Well, we got both of those this week. Weekly high is complete. Let me go to the daily data. And here's our daily data. If this is a weekly high and we fin uh, completed the uh, uh, impulsive momentum or impulsive trend off the December low, and this is impulsive, that means uh, we should have a correction to this trend from the December low. What are the minimum time and price targets that would we anticipate for the correction? That can be some really useful information because until we uh, reach those minimum time and price targets for a corrective low, is that we, we have to assume that eventually the market's going to keep going lower sideways to down at least. Certainly would not be a time to consider long trades. Let's go for price. Let's do our price retracements. We'll keep it real simple to begin with. We're going to look at two or three markets like this. And I get rid of the 38%. That has only uh, value in a couple of unique situations. But typically, a correction to a five-wave impulsive trend reaches at least the 50% retracement. It can be much more than that, but that would be our minimum expectation. That's around 2582. So more than likely, the uh, trend is going to be sideways to down and eventually reach at least 2582. So until we've reached that, we have to assume there's a going to be a continuation of the bear trend unless there's some other compelling technical information. Well, that's the price retracement. That's real simple. Everyone does their FIB price retracements. And as the market progresses, we'll be able to hone in onto that. But how many of you do time retracements? They're equally as important and equally as useful to make specific practical trade decisions. So and, uh, time retracement is a little bit different. Time retracements to an impulsive trend is we typically uh, we have the re time retracement at 38 to 62 percent time retracements. And uh, let me just expand the data a little bit here. Not the 50 to 62, but 38 to 62, around one third to two thirds. Those of you who've been around a while and like to read some of the old uh, trading books, uh, which I highly recommend, even if you haven't been around a while. Arthur Merle did some studies back in, I think it was in the 70s, very comprehensive studies of the entire history, at least of the Dow Jones data, which begins in the late 1800s, and found that uh, corrections were around one-third to two-thirds of the prior trend. Well, I use the FIB relationships of 38 to 62 percent. So how is this useful? Uh, it's useful in that more than likely, uh, the, the only number we're going to be concerned with now is more than likely the market is going to be sideways to down at least 
until March 27th. In other words, for at least another three weeks. Uh, so that's a really useful piece of information it indicates we're just in the initial stages of this immediate bear trend, which should continue at least to March 27th, certainly could go longer, and should reach at least the 50% retracement. Those two pieces of information themselves uh, will be very useful to develop trade strategies in the days ahead. So if we think of that, we've got quite a ways to go in time quite a ways to go in price, although our daily momentums are dual look back oversold, any advance should be a cor just a minor correction, corrective advance within the higher time frame bear trend that will eventually continue lower into March 27th and reach at least 50% retracement. So what an ideal uh, position or uh, situation to be in if we get a corrective advance of three or four days, two, three, four days, and uh, onto a, a minor retracement to a position on the short side for a continuation of the bear trend. So real simple analysis, real simple, um, uh, some basic minimum time and price targets. Let's look at another market, which also has an immediate uh, uh, trade position. Let's take a quick look at gold, and uh, this is gold right up through the end of Friday, uh, March 8th. And we've made a five-wave decline in gold that should not be the end of a correction. It's either wave one, the beginning of a bear trend, or it's a wave A, the first section of a higher time frame correction. Either case, we should have a wave two or B, a corrective advance. And what, what did we just learn about the probable and the typical minimum time and price uh, targets for a correction to an impulsive five-wave trend. Well, 50% retracement in price, 38% retracement in time. That would indicate that gold would probably be sideways to up into at least March 13th. That's this Wednesday. It'd be another three days sideways to up. It would probably reach about 50% retracement, if not more, at 13.15 or so. I just drawn a box around. This would be the ideal wave two or B target zone of 50, 62% price retracement, 38, 62% time retracement. And we have our daily momentums are bullish, and that supports uh, the probabilities of being sideways up for another two to three days, and uh, if, if not more. But what a great piece of information to have, number one, knowing that the higher time frame trend uh, off of the February 20th high should be bearish. Any rallies should be corrections within that higher time frame uh, bear trend, we should have at least one more section down to a new low below the March 7th low after we finish this corrective rally, which is likely to continue until at least Wednesday, March 13th, and reach around 50% retracement, if not more. Uh, so that's what we're going to be looking at over the next two or three days, because what a great setup to continue the higher time frame trend, which in this case is bearish, to a new extreme. Uh, so let's be prepared for that. And that's how we can use real simple stuff, simple retracements in price, simple retracements in time to identify a prob the probable conditions for a high probability trend. And we can identify those in advance. And then if the market fulfills those, we then identify a very specific trade strategies once the market gets into that ideal position to complete a correction or a trend. Well, that's it for today. What you learned today, apply to any market in any time frame. If you like what you learned, uh, check out our DT reports and pass this along and uh, try to uh, let your friends uh, learn along with you and maybe become subscribers to our YouTube channel as well. That's it for today. Take care. Robert Miner, over and out for now.